on the conversation. Oh, it's, just, it's like they're, they're chatting away because uh, I was wondering, Sutapa Das, I was wondering how to survive here in the UK. I am storing pulses and learning to live from natural foods in hedge groves, etc. Hedge. Hedgerows. And then Osida said the UK will be a central place for military abuse and control. Yeah, I would get the heck out of there. If, if there's any way for you to get out of the UK, oh boy. And then Melissa says, I just received word from an inside source in the police department here that they received a lot of gear for riot control. This is alarming because I am aware of the corporate plans. My yeah. question is similar to Sutapa Das. I, am I still at all safe here in Canada? In Canada? That's Canada Canada is relatively safe. But um, they're expecting this summer there's going to be food shortages. The main reason for that is the lack of credit available to farmers. Um, especially in North America and North America and Europe, uh, the banks have almost completely stopped lending. And farmers there, the, the system of farming there is completely dependent upon credit. So if they're not lending, the farmers can't afford to, to plant crops. Or if they can afford to plant, they can't afford to fertilize and cultivate. Hmm? Like the winter wheat crop this year is very small and poor quality because the farmers couldn't afford enough diesel fuel even to cultivate their fields properly, what to speak of the fertilizer and all the other stuff they need. So um, it looks like the price of wheat is going to maybe double or even triple this summer, uh, at least in North America. So. Um, that's another reason why we're in South America, <laughs> because here um, it's not quite so bad. Not, I mean, there's still problems, but it's not at all uh, as bad as in North America and Europe. We researched the economy before we came here, and the economy in Chile is much more robust. Uh, um, so. Yes, all the North American and European governments are expecting food riots this summer. And uh, we've talked about this several times already, uh, warning people. But, you know, it's like people don't believe us. We've been talking for years about 2012. Nobody believed us. Huh? Well, maybe just a handful. Um, so we've been advising people what actions to take for many years. And people just aren't taking action. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> what can we tell you? Uh, get out of Canada, get out of US, get out of UK, get out of Europe, and uh, find yourself a nice little community that's self sufficient, that's on, on the land. You know, we've been telling this, we've been saying this for years now. Well, why don't people do it? Don't believe that this is just a temporary situation and it's going, everything's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right. It's going to be very, very serious. We've been saying this for years now. Please wake up. Do something about it. Melissa says, uh, I have already begun storing food and survival gear. I started six months ago. I just suddenly have been feeling a push telling me to leave, leave town. Where are you? Where is she at? In Canada. Right? Where? Oh, exactly. And then everybody starts saying that, oh, you should leave. Get out of the city. Get out of the city, for sure. Wherever you are, get out of the city. The whole Western thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the winter is too frightening because it's hard to compile enough food for the whole winter. Yeah, winters up in Canada are rough. Well, we're, we're trying to create a situation where everybody can come and be safe, you know, but we really need everybody's help and cooperation to do that. Um, so far, 
Okay, we have enough resources to take care of the brahmacharis. But uh, to really make a, a robust community, we need the householders' help and cooperation. But the householders, see, people have been conditioned that, you know, well, I'm going to take care of my family, and that's it. Yeah, really. <laughs> I got my AK-47 in the closet, you know. And uh, people are, are, are expecting this nuclear family thing uh, to be a platform that it's going to work, but it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work because it's too small of a unit to attain self-sufficiency. Even if you have resources like land and so on, a nuclear family, uh, one couple and a few children, doesn't have enough labor force to attain self-sufficiency all the things that need to be done, see? Again, because of duplication of labor and resources. To get enough people together to attain self-sufficiency, you have to like have 10 families at least. Uh, 10 families, that means like 30 people, including uh, parents and kids, all right? So we're saying we want to have a group that's between like 30 and 50 people. It's about the right size. And then we can go out and find a piece of land and raise enough crops on it to be virtually self-sufficient. Less than that or more than that, it's going to be a problem. But without, unless the householders get their act together and come and join us, then well, how are they going to survive? And this assessed to live in Ontario. Ontario? Oh, boy, it's cold up there. Then there's a question from Bruce. Bruce, huh? Have you figured out a way to avoid the trouble that is going to encounter about the selection of the next Acharya? Yeah. And if so, how? Yeah, ISKCON had a problem because they thought, oh, Prabhupada is disappearing, and now we have to select some, we have to have a guru. So they selected somebody or a group of people who were all unqualified. Um, that's wrong. What you should do is wait until Krishna sends someone who is qualified. What's the problem? See, their assumption was wrong. Their assumption was, we have to have a guru, or this whole thing's going to fall apart. No, it's not right. It's incorrect assumption. Because then if you uh, select an unqualified guru, then the whole thing is going to fall apart. And that's what's happening. But if you wait, just wait. Just be patient. Maybe you have to wait 20 or 30 years until another self-realized soul comes along. What's the problem? Just wait. Guru has two qualifications. Num number one has to be self-realized. Number two, he has to have his guru's permission or order. See? So, in, in my case, I had the order in 1977, but I didn't attain self-realization until 2002. 25 years. So, what can I tell you? You have to be patient. It's better to wait than to make the mistake of having unqualified guru. So, more question? Navisa says, I wish to be part of the community as a householder, but I have to start my degree program first and finish, of course. Oh yeah, well that degree is really going to be valuable after everything falls apart. Better make sure you get that degree. That way you can starve with that nice no, thing the on the wall. The our uh, degree. <laughs> oh, our degree. That's better. That's going to give you something useful. You can hang on the wall. Huh? No, because you're going to change your consciousness. See, our degree is a, a regular <laughs> academic degree means you get 
uh, you get a piece of paper that you can hang on the wall and impress your friends and employers and like that. Our degree is a degree of consciousness. See? You attain a certain state of consciousness as a result of our degree program. So, you know, who cares if you have something on the wall, a certificate or whatever? It's useless. But if you can actually attain a higher state of consciousness, then, oh, so much better. So what's going to happen, or what's going to have to happen, is that we find a, a married couple who is willing to join our community and move here and create the Grihasta Ashram. And then other married or unmarried householders can move here and they'll have some structure to move into. Huh? We don't know what those householders do. I mean, we're just celibate, you see, so we don't have any 